So today we are having a look at our Sites Blind, which is out of our kitchen in our motorhome. The idea is, is that I would really like to replace the mesh on the screen, which is pretty dirty. But not only that, um, to allow us to have a kitchen window open um, in Scotland, I'm going to replace the mesh with a smaller uh, or closer knit mesh, um, which will hopefully not let the midges in. Anyway, so we've started off by, uh, I'll just show you the side part. So we've started off by untensioning the rods which hold the blinds in. Uh, these are the little plastic bits which go into here. And all you do is uh, put a screwdriver, flathead screwdriver in and turn it clockwise until the plastic part pops out of the hole. Uh, we've done it for both, even though I'm only replacing one, because uh, to take this off, you need to be able to untension both of them. Then we've undone the screws and taken the support arm off. Obviously now the tension rods for both are sticking out. So that means that we can pull the mesh and the blind out and have a good look at it. So once you've got that all untensioned, you can pull the mesh blind completely out. Um, it has an end cap on the end, which you'll need to remove to be able to take the mesh off completely. And basically there's a um, groove on this panel and a groove right at the top, which I'll show you in a minute. And it's fairly simple. The mesh just slides out. It's got a tiny little rubber rod in the top and the bottom, which help it slides in and helps it to slide in and out of the groove, which you'll need to keep hold of. Um, and the same at the top up here, which I'll show you in a second. So as you can see, I've now pulled the mesh completely so it's flat. And you can just see here that once you've taken that end cap off, you can slide it, the mesh in and out of the groove with a little rubber tube in there. So I think the next step is to measure the existing mesh to see how wide and how long it is and to cut a new piece from my new smaller gauge mesh and to sew two hems on the top and bottom which fit over this little rubber piece and then we'll see if we can refit it and put it all back together. The new mesh that I bought is specifically for midges um, it has a very, very tiny, tiny little hole. I managed to get this from a company called Point North um, on the internet. Very reasonably priced and I've got quite a lot of it in case I want to do any of the other blinds. But we'll give this one a go first. Because I'm not sure what I'm going to do, whether I'm going to have to reuse this bit of mesh, I'm just giving it a clean. Um, as you can see, it's actually coming up alright over here. This is the bit I've got to get off now. Um, as you can see, that's come up pretty well. It's pretty clean. There's marks you can see are the shadows from the light. <laughs> and I just used this, which is Silic Bang by Carbonate of Soda. Mixed it in with some hot water and then just used a white cloth um, and, a, and a scrubbing brush. Uh, to clean the mesh and it's come up pretty good. So after quite a lot of trial and error and arguments, almost divorce, <laughs> we finally got the uh, midgy mesh, I'm going to call it, um, slotted in around the mesh that was already in the blinds. Um, basically what we've done is we 
have folded it round the um, nylon um, piping that goes through the uh, um, bottom of the blind to secure it. And what we've done is we've, we've wrapped the new midi mesh round that. Now the reason we've done that is because I couldn't find any of the new nylon stuff to make a brand new blind. So if anybody knows where to get that stuff from, then please let me know. 2.5 mil. Yeah, we think it's about 2.5 mil, um, but it needs to be rigid. They do a lot of stuff, but it's quite wibbly wobbly, but the stuff in these blinds is very rigid. So um, yeah, so if anybody knows, anyway, so we've cleaned it up and we've managed to finally get this bit of mesh in. Um, now we're hoping what happens is that when we tension the blind, it will tension the new mesh and that will stop it coming out of the slot. We'll soon see. So we're just about to do the top part. So this is basically the tension pole, which goes in the top of the uh, blind. And uh, it's, you can see it's got a slot there. And what we're going to do is do exactly the same thing and try and slot that into the groove wrapped around the existing blind. We've uh, used pegs to keep it tensioned to a point and also to make sure that we've got that hem, if you like, around the um, piping to make sure it doesn't slip out. So we'll give that a go and let you know how we get on. So the next job before we put the blind back together is to put a little bit of extra uh, draft excluder around the window. Now we've got the, these are the side panels that sort of fit onto the wall where the blind goes through. So what we've decided to do is um, put some extra draft excluder in this bit here. So I've bought some nine mil furry draft excluder uh, from eBay or Amazon, one of the two, wasn't very expensive, got a whole roll of it. Um, so I've cut this strip, I'm just gonna stick this on and stick another bit on the other side. So this is um, peel and stick, nice and easy. And I'm going to start at this end. Try and get it straight. Put it in that groove. A little bit long, so I'll have to just trim that off. One done, other one to go. So what we're going to attempt to do now is put the fly screen back into the window that the frame okay so the actual um blind is already in here um which goes in the bottom section um and the fly screen goes in the top section so it sits behind the blind when you put it back up so um what we need to do is um start off with we're going to put this end cap back into the netting blind so that it's got somewhere to see into um, the blind itself that actually just sits in there like that. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, so we're gonna put that back in. And the next thing we need to do is to roll the blind, roll the netting back around the blind so we can put it into here. So we're gonna mirror the current blind so we're going to roll it that way doesn't matter if it's not too tight because that's what the tensioners are for just make sure it's straight 
And then we'll take that. And this end slots into this hole here. So that's all put back in and we've got it um, ready to put the tensioners in um, and all that's left to do is to put these two caps back on here and to tension the blind. So before we tension the blinds we need to screw the end cap back on. So. three screws yeah. and they're actually posi ones they're not posi two so you need a this is a ph one but you'll need a, a posi one to do these and for those people that don't know what a posi one is <laughs> screwdriver yeah it's the size of the, the size head. of the head yeah so that's a posi one. So a normal standard screwdriver is a posi two. Well, so that will be too big. And it all so that won't work. And it will mess up your screws. Yeah, it will just rip the head off. So mm -hmm. you need to make sure that you get a posi one that fits a screwdriver yeah. that fits in there. But you can use a posi two. Uh, sorry, a Phillips one, which is what I've got here. Yeah, that will work in there as well. So then it's time to put the tensioners in. So we have tensioned the blind um, and I will show you how to do that. Uh, so I'll untension it now and then retension it up. So you can see there's like a butterfly or a bow tie um, fitting here. So what you do is you un undo that so you put the the butterfly or the bow tie in the grooves that correspond and then what i did is i got a little screwdriver and i just popped it inside the right bit just to pop it out from the inside it's a little bit fiddly you watch, I can't do it now. <laughs> oh, come on. There we go. Okay, so that makes you jump when it pops out. <laughs> so that's untensioned that all the way out. Once there's no tension in it, then if you just pop that in the hole but don't push it all the way in and if you just hold the other side so don't push on the other side because I'll use the spring inside here to turn this but keep it in the right place so I'll just start again so if you push on it or someone pushes then it goes in there and stops you pushing it so that's fully untensioned so half one half two, three, four, half, five, half, six. And then that should be enough. So then you pop it in and then you just twist it back on itself and then that locks it in that position. And then my glamorous assistant <laughs> will demonstrate hopefully. <laughs> hopefully that it's tensioned correctly. Oh, it's come out because it needs. Okay. Can you just push that side in? That's it. Not too much. Yeah, it will go in once. Uh, just push it down and try locking it in position and then putting it up if it will go. <laughs> 
Okay, and then undo. <laughs> it's hard to do it when it's not attached to the wall. Ah, uh, comes out one side, not the other. There we go. So, so that might not have enough tension on it. I think because you're actually pushing it in. Okay. It's stopping it. Okay. Because once that's in and on the wall, then obviously I'm, this is the wall, so this is where it's screwed. So I'm putting a screwdriver in there to pop it out. So I think I'm not sure that you'll be able to tension it because I don't think that will come out enough because it doesn't seem to grip and come out. And also in our van, um, we've got a wall here. <laughs> so you won't be able to put a screwdriver in there anyway. So you're best to make sure you get the tensioning right before you put it back up, Yeah, if you can. So we weren't happy with the level of tension, so we've taken it to the next level and we've actually screwed the um, piece to a piece of wood. So it's completely fixed now. Um, we've made sure it was uh, straight with a right angle as well, just to make sure that these two arms are dead straight and uh, we'll test the level of uh, tension in the blinds again and if we're not happy we can uh, tension them up a bit more in situ here rather than trying to do it once we've attached it in the van so they don't interfere so you can put those washers on there if okay. you like let's try the top one it's relatively good i think yeah See if it goes back in. I'll never let go of them. I might just need a helping hand at the top there. Yeah. Let's see the Depends whether we want to whether we want them more tension than that. Well, let's let's try it and see. Let's see if we can tension them in situ because I'm not so. Which one was it? The front one that was a bit. So yeah. I'm going to go one more turn. Yeah. No, they, they do come out, you, so you can adjust them. In situ, in situ. as long as you've got enough room to put a Yeah. Okay, shall I try it again? Okay. Yeah. So this is the one that we've just tensioned, Yeah, so I that think. one was a little bit loose, wasn't it? Yeah. Sometimes I get stuck. That's it. Better. That looked better, didn't it? So should we give it another one? Yeah and see how that works. That's got more tension in there. Yeah, that, that was better, better on that box. It's just the, from where you can, because you can lock it in there, you see? Yeah. So if you unlock it from there, does it go That's back? That's better, isn't it? That's better, isn't it? Shall we try this one again? Yeah, go on then. So this one just goes straight up. See, I think that probably needs one more as well. Let's do one more on there then. This is the... If that one gets stuck, doesn't it? Yeah, this is the issue with this one, is that it's, it doesn't sit, it doesn't want to pop out. No, without your little screwdriver. That goes in there, and then when I turn it, I'll try and get that in there a bit tighter, when I turn it and try and pull it out. Ooh! Yes, yes. well done. <laughs> right, so you need to wedge the screwdriver into the, the plastic side. into there so it's so it grips so when you pull it out it doesn't just slip out so now I'm going to tighten that up one or more so half one I'm going to give it two actually there we go and then in oh <laughs> that was stuck that is stuck there we go, and let's just pop that back in there now. There we go, right, let's give that Excellent. a go. Right, I'm going to move the camera. Let's pop that back over here. Let's see how good that is. No, go I'm going to do both. So that one is in, with our nice extra bit of netting. And our blind. Let the blind go. That's not bad, is it? No, that's right. 
I can get this to go, yep. Yeah. I'd say that's I enough think tension. That's, I think that's good. Yay! So now we put the blind back in the van. So first of all, we need to stand it up like so, and then get our screws. First one in. That was the dodgy one, wasn't it? That was the dodgy one, so that one's okay. Oh, apologies for the crap filming. Yeah, so the, the hole on this side um, had been previously fixed in inverted commas. <laughs> um, not yeah. very well. It so it had pulled out slightly. So the original screws went in the wall about 12 mil and they changed the screw for a different screw so they put a self tapper in there which didn't really grip very well was it shorter as well no it was the same oh, length okay. but it just didn't work because the self tappers are narrower on the point right um so i've changed now i've replaced them for these which are hinge screws and also in a lot of the german vans they use the torx rather than a posi so I've I'm going around and replacing all of the screws that I take out with posi ones because then I can use my own tools own tools so that's the two in there but I've used so these are 25 mil whereas those ones are 20 mil because they're on an angle and I've measured the depth of the side of the van the side of the van's 28 mil and they go into the van 15 mil now so they're not going to burst out the other, the other side, side or mm. cause any issues um so that's the two top ones in now the bottom ones have a spacer behind that goes there and also you can see i put my head in the way because it's a bit bright oh, no maybe not so that has a spacer there to lift this off I'm assuming that is so this handle when this is closed this bit doesn't bash into it yeah that's so the only reason the yeah that I can think that they do that um, but unfortunately you can see on the inside oh, it's a bit shadowy. The, yeah. the, the plastic's, broken, the plastic's broken so not only am I gonna put a spacer on the back I'm going to use one of these screw cups to go over the front so that that will then spread the pull of the screw across the whole plastic. Cool. So hopefully this should go in relatively easily. <laughs> yeah. Not the easiest to film this in a in a small space, but there you go. Right, that looks like they're fixed, so let's try the blind. <laughs> Oh, that makes oh. a nice noise. We only really pull those down at night anyway, that one, yeah. don't we? So that is, it's probably not, it's not snapping back. No. So it could probably have done, done with, with another. It's a bit sticky, that one. It's always been sticky. Yeah, you have to really so, 
flip it, don't you? Yeah. It's going back in. So it's going, it's going up and down. It's got to tilt it quite a lot. Yeah. And then it will go. It's just not not snapping back. Again, that could be because we've not tensioned it enough, and yeah. we were nervous about that. Or it could be because now it's dealing with two layers of mesh. Yeah. Um, but it works. But it works. Not perfect, but it works. So we'll have to see if uh, it can keep the Scottish midge out. We will. Yeah. Well, there. When you when it's closed, yeah. oh, you can see it's definitely a Close lot closer it Close in it there. Mesh. Yeah. Um, but obviously, there's still a a small gap there. So yeah, but we'll, we talked about putting yeah, some. Yeah. So we may excluder. have to. So more of that draft excluder just along the bottom yeah. edge there. Which I think is a good idea. I think we'll do that. Yeah. I'll hide that bit of monkey wall anyway. There we so. go. All done. Okay. Well, we'll see whether it works. We will do. Yeah, we will report back in a couple of months when we come back from Bonnie Scotland. Mm -hmm.